This might be the hardest challenge I've ever done. I know I've said that a lot, but we are literally going to be starting from nothing here. Because today, I have to cut everybody that you are looking at here and start from complete scratch. I don't get any picks for these players. I don't get anything for these players. And we basically have to build this team like it's an expansion team. But worse, because at least they have an expansion draft. But I'm gonna keep this intro short because I'm excited to get into this, so if you enjoy today's video, be sure to drop a like, because if we hit 1,500 likes on this video, I've been asked a ton to do an expansion team rebuild with relocation, all that kind of stuff. So if we can hit that, I will do an expansion team. And liking the video helps me know y'all enjoy it, so it helps me know to make more like this. Plus, it helps push these videos to more people, even though it sounds stupid, it really helps out. And subscribe for more because I have a lot of fun stuff planned. And once we hit 30,000 subscribers, which we are less than 200 away from, I have a long special video planned. So be sure to subscribe if you want to be an OG of the channel while you still can be one for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers, I'm sure. And I want to see if we can get to 35k by the end of the month, so if there's anyone you know that likes Madden rebuilds, let them know about the channel. And last thing, just let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have, because if I use your suggestion, I'll give you a shout out. I don't think this one was a suggestion, but I do use a lot of suggestions. But that's more than enough yapping, let's get into more Yappin. Maybe I shouldn't use the Panthers. <laughs> Should I switch teams real quick? I don't know why I picked the Panthers. This is one of the few teams that don't have a first round pick. Here, I'll steal our pick back because I want to use the Panthers. <laughs> All right, well, I got our picks back and now it's time to gut the roster. Okay, well... <laughs> Here's the team. And now, now that all of our players are gone, let's see who we want to be on this starting roster. I think my strategy is just going to be to go with the youngest players in free agency. Obviously, I can't re-sign any of these guys, but let's see who we want. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, well, I signed some players. Some are on actual teams in real life, but just got cut here. If there were any, like, ridiculous players, I didn't sign them, like, unrealistic cuts. There were some unrealistic cuts, but... But I had to do what I had to do. But here is the team. It's interesting. <laughs> Obviously not the, the best in the world, but that's how it's going to be year one. We also got some fun players like Smoke Monday, Elite Name. I like Verone McKinley. Eli Ricks got cut. Javon Kinlaw, that's interesting. Justin Ross. And Max Duggan is going to be our QB for year one. We'll see how he does. He's not a very good scheme fit at all, but <laughs> maybe he can develop in that aspect. He might because it'll upgrade Scrambler. That should help with improviser. Uh, what did that just do? On Max Duggan and it cleared our entire... That was interesting. <laughs> is it gonna do it again? No, okay. This game is something else, man. I'm interested to see if we can win a game year one. I don't expect to, but it would be funny if this team beat an actual NFL team. There's no chance it should or come even close, but we'll see. So let's get to the midseason point and we will see how the expansion team pretty much is doing. Okay, well, at at the midseason point, we are one and five. Uh, <laughs> who did we beat? How, how did we beat a team? Oh my god, the Dolphins beat us 31 to nothing. That's valid. They probably should have beat us worse. We probably beat like an actual good team too. Eh, we beat an okay team, the Vikings. You know what? If any team was gonna lose to the to this team, the Vikings are understandable. But also, we've gotten blown out in pretty much every other game, so I don't know. Should I check this? Eh, no, we'll save the stats for the end of the year. I, I was curious about what we're looking like so far. We'll save that for the end of the year though. Same with re-signings. I mean, I don't know who I'm gonna want back. I don't know who's gonna do well. It's gonna be a lot of players to re-sign though. I don't want to be here for 24 years, so I don't think I'm gonna re-sign too many of these guys, only if they do like really well. We'll see. Actually, I kind of want, I kind of want Smoke Monday. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, he re-signs. Cool. <laughs> but we are using real life draft classes for this, at least for year one. So Caleb Williams, that sounds kind of fun. But let's get to the end of the season and we we will see how we finish. Okay, I did not do this. <laughs> And I have uh, prospect scenarios off. Wh what happened here? This glitch is still a thing? Holy shit, this has existed for I don't even know how long. Where it like doubles up the rankings. Like see there are two projected number one picks, two number threes, two number tens. If you know a way to fix this, let me know because I have no idea how to fix it. When's the last time Madden has actually like fixed a glitch in their game that doesn't like directly lose them money? Oh my god, almost every single rank has 
has like a doubled up one. Like there's 231s, 230s. This is even worse than it used to be. Before it would only do like a couple where it freaked them out. Now it looks like most of the rankings. There's two number 13s, two number 10s. And it like completely <laughs> rearranged everything. That's cool. <sighs> this is gonna be fun to fix. All right, well, we finish two and 15 in year one. Who else did we beat? Who, who lost to this team? The Texans? Like we get dumpstered by the Bears, but we beat the Texans. I We got beat 49 to two by the Titans. Interesting. That's all I can say. That's interesting. We had <laughs> eight points per game on offense and 31 points per game allowed. We actually had a good pass D apparently. Only 206 yards per game. I guess teams were just running all over us. I don't know. <laughs> Max Duggan. Wow, that's bad. Oh my God. Okay. 2,500 yards, nine touchdowns, 29 interceptions. That might be the worst season I've ever seen from an actual quarterback. I thought he would do like not great, but I, I didn't think he would do that bad. I mean, it's understandable with the, the, the surrounding cast here, but still. Dwayne McBride with 600 yards and a deadly 2.8 yards per attempt. That's great. Uh, KJ Hamler, 762 yards and five touchdowns. Actually a pretty good year. Justin Ross did all right. Oh, Logan Bruss or Bruce. Logan Brussy, as I like to call him, allowed 20 sacks. Our interior actually wasn't that bad, especially John Simpson. I think we'll keep him. And damn, okay. I went for only rookie linebackers because usually when you have a terrible offense, it means the defense ends up being on the field a lot, right? So I was hoping our number one linebacker could get like a million tackles, but only 126 tackles for Jeremy Banks. I mean, that's a good amount, but you know, I was going for like defensive rookie of the year and tack NFL tackles leader here. I don't think he's going to get that. TFL's 13 for Javon Kinlaw led the team, 11 for Malik Harrison and TJ Slayton, and then sacks two and a half for Malik Harrison, two for Andre Carter. Interesting. And then interceptions, two for Smoke Monday and Joe Juan Williams, one for Bumper Pool, a few players. <laughs> Definitely an interesting year. Josh Allen wins MVP. I'm surprised it's not a division rival, although I, I guess I wouldn't really know who that would be. There isn't really a great division rival QB here. Offensive player of the year goes to Dak Prescott, though. Shocker, there are no Panthers there. Defensive player of the year, Micah Parsons wins it. Okay, no Panthers. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Bijan. That makes sense. Dwayne McBride at number nine, even though he was kind of awful. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Byron Young. Okay. Banks at number four. Poole at number six. So not as good of a start as I expected, but there's there's clearly a lot to go in this rebuild. So let's get into the offseason and let's start working on this team. We're actually going to be bringing back a lot less players than I expected, though. We'll have to see if we get any dev traits. That could be huge. I don't know who would get one, though. Not going to lie. But in the Super Bowl, the Ravens take down the Eagles 24 to 17. I mean, the Eagles have a good team on paper. I'm just not a very big Nick Sirianni enjoyer. I'm not going to lie. But we do not have any dev ups on offense, unfortunately, and on defense. Ooh. Okay. Whoa. We got a lot more than I expected. I thought maybe Jeremy Banks would get one, but I didn't think he would. But we got one for him, Malik Harrison, Verone McKinley, and Joe Juan Williams. So we're going to bring, we're going to bring back those four players. I thought maybe Javon Kinlaw could get one, but he didn't. What did Jeremy Banks get one for? Does it say? No, it just says plus star dev. I don't think it's going to tell us why any of these players got a dev trait, but I'll definitely take it. We need to re-sign these players though, which could be the hard part because I don't necessarily see anyone being too interested in joining this team. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but let's see who we want to re-sign. Also, if we have like bad cap space, I think I'm just going to clear the cap. I mean, that's maybe cheating a little bit, but the rebuild just straight up won't be fun if I don't. Our money isn't too bad yet though, but we will bring Malik Harrison back. I mean, he wasn't that good, but he got a dev trait for some reason. So four years, 22 mil, he resigns. Joe Juan Williams, four years, 19 mil, doesn't take it. Ooh, was he actually good or did he just kind of get it for no reason? Two picks, ooh, 13. Okay, he was actually good. Oh, we need to resign him in free agency. Eli Ricks, because he's young, I'll try to bring him back and he does come back. KJ Hamler, I'll resign. Just kidding, he doesn't want to. <laughs> Justin Ross, no. All right, Javon Kinlaw was decent, but he's already 26, which isn't that old, but it kind of is for franchise. Mitchell Tinsley, do you want to resign? Okay, he does at least. Verone McKinley, four years, 13 mil, he resigns. And then who was the last star dev? There, oh yeah, Jeremy Banks. Oh, he's not interested though, but we can up the money, that's fine. He resigns. And then I might worry about a few more of these, but I will see y'all for free agency. Hopefully there's some decent players that are actually interested in joining. Okay, well, this is actually a decent free agent class. 
I mean, it's not the worst. It's definitely not the best, but there are some decent players here. The problem is none of them are interested, so that's kind of tough, but there are a few that are interested, so we are going to go for Tommy Townsend, punter, who cares? We're going to go for Michael Pierce, which could be nice, even though he is 31. Josh Uche is kind of the big one here. Sometimes he's terrible in this game. Sometimes he's amazing. It, <laughs> it depends which version of him we get. I don't know. We do have a lead for him, and he is interested, so I hope we can get him. Damian Harris is also pretty good. We're going for two former now Patriots, I guess. We're going to go for Gabe Davis, which could be fun. Patrick Queen, Alohi Gilman, Bryce Hall, which I don't know if we'll get him. Jeff Okuda, who got star dev, so that's kind of cool. We'll, we'll try to re-sign Joan Williams, Natani Moody. We'll try to re-sign John Simpson, and then Zach Wilson's going to be our QB for now. I mean, we're going to draft a QB, obviously. <laughs> God, we, recency bias is the hardest drug of all time. I put him in my, uh, like, team of busts rebuild, and so many people commented, Zach Wilson isn't a bust. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, what? <laughs> he had one decent game, and that's it. I'm not saying he can't build on that. I'm just saying to say he's not a bust because of one decent game compared to all of the shit he's put on tape is insane. If he was, like, a late first round pick, I, I guess, but he was the number two overall pick. That, those comments just baffled me. I don't even think I responded to any of them. I was just like, it's not worth it. Again, I'm not saying he can't become good. I'm just saying to consider him not a bust so far is fucking insane. Anyways, <laughs> he'll be our backup QB for this year. We'll see what QB we can to replace him, but let's see if any of these players want to sign. Ooh, okay, not as many as I expected, but we do get Tommy Townsend, Michael Pierce, Josh Uche, Patrick Queen, Alohi Gilman, Jeff Okuda, and Zach Wilson. I don't think we got Bryce Hall, which is fine. Yeah, he went to the Steelers. Damn, the Titans went crazy. They got Tyron Smith, Brian Burns, Bryce Huff. Interesting. Do I want to sign a different corner or am I fine with just drafting one? Yeah, we might just draft one, but we still have the lead for all these players. Jalen Mayfield, John Simpson. I'm not going to list all of them. You see them. <laughs> so let's see if any of them want to sign now. Ooh, I don't know if we're going to get Gabe Davis. Oh no. But we get, is Joe Juan Williams the only one that signed? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get Gabe Davis. Well, is there another decent young receiving option? We could go LaVisca Chenault, but I don't know if I want to re-sign any of this team's original players. Justin Ross, I guess we'll try to bring him back in, but receiver might be a problem, honestly. So let's see if any of these players want to sign now. <laughs> Gabe Davis still has not made a decision, but we get Natani Moody, I think, is the one who signed. Do you want to sign now? Okay, we're out of simulations for the week. Whatever. Let's get to the next week, and we'll see if Gabe Davis signs. Like, 99% he won't sign with us, but we'll see. Okay, and he signs with the commanders. Really? You chose... Well, I guess that's understandable. We have a terrible roster. Fuck it. Let's go for LaVisca Chenault. We'll just go team... We'll go team friendly, so it's not super expensive. I mean, he isn't super expensive either way, but three years, 27 mil, almost 28. We'll see if these guys want to sign now. Okay. We get LaVisca Chenault. That's cool. Okay, and the other two final... That took forever, but we got most of the players we wanted. So now, let's get to the draft, and we'll see what we can do. Oh my god, what happened to the Raiders? Why do we pick at number two? <laughs> Did the Raiders go like 0-17? They went 1-16. They're normally, like, dominant in this game, too. They're normally way better than they should be, but here they're way worse than they should be. I am shocked we don't have the number one pick. Oh my god, this is, this is set up way better than I thought it would. Okay, depending on what the Raiders do here at number one, this is perfect. They're gonna go Caleb Williams, though, right? Okay, so the plan was, I was gonna stick it, or no, I, I was hoping I would have the number one pick. I was assuming we would, because we were like a 67 overall team, and we went, what, two and four, or two and 15? I was hoping the Cardinals would have the number two or number three pick. They do have the pick right behind us, and the pick after that, but us not being at number one kind of, kind of killed my plan, because I didn't want to use Caleb Williams in two rebuilds within, like, the same week. I was gonna trade down and pick Drake May, but I guess this kind of did that for me, but we don't get the benefit of trading down. It also put Fashanu back in the... I literally took him out. What? Or no, I'm getting him mixed up. Okay, I'm... They have two similar of last names. Never mind. That's right. But here, we are gonna go with Drake May. My first time using him in this game. Let's take him. Hidden Dev, 96 throw power, 86 speed. That's kind of ridiculous. We'll take it. I didn't mess with those ratings for him, so whatever they were, that's... That's just what it is. But now in the second round, this is interesting. We could go, like, any direction we want to here, really. Ooh, let's go with Troy Franklin. I don't know if he has a dev trait, <laughs> but I'm gonna give him one. I'm a... I'm a big Troy Franklin and 
enjoyer. I think he's a little underrated at this point. So he is going to be the number one option for Drake May. We're really revamping this offense, so let's take him. He does have hidden, and he looks pretty good. But here in the third round, Brandon Dorless actually looks kind of crazy too. I, I haven't touched defensive ends yet. So again, whatever the original creators of this draft class is made, uh, you know, that's just what it is for Brandon Dorless. I feel like there's definitely a better way to phrase what I'm trying to say there. I'm just stupid and words are hard, I guess. But <laughs> let's go with Brandon Dorless out of Oregon. Okay, he has normal dev, unfortunately, but based off his ratings, it looks like he's a really high overall. So I'm fine with, but I might make one or two more picks, probably a lineman soon. Ooh, we got the, we got the sneaky athletic Lad McConkey here. <laughs> Apparently not, according to the draft class creator here. 4-6 speed, I don't know about that, but I'll make a few more picks and we'll see what kind of draft we ended up with. Okay, well, here is how we did in the draft and you know, it isn't the best looking draft on paper. This draft class is very like uh, mid overall heavy past the first round, I guess. Like there aren't many super high overall guys that are available later on. I guess a few exceptions, but yeah, still, it's going to take me <laughs> so long to get these draft classes where I want them, but it'll be worth it. I'll get it eventually. But Drake May is a 77, obviously hidden dev, looks pretty good. I, I don't know what team is going to take him. I mean, we'll, we're still early in the process, but I could actually see him slipping a little bit. Not because I don't think he's good, but like, I don't know. I, I just could see that for some weird reason. Not much, but maybe to like five or six or something. I don't know. I kind of feel like he'll end up on the Patriots. I don't know. It's hard to mock the top few picks these year because I don't know. I just have no idea how high teams are on these quarterbacks. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. kind of throws a wrench into it too. So it's interesting. But Troy Franklin looks good too. 74 overall with hidden dev. He should be nice. Brandon Dorless is a 72. Overall, this draft was pretty good. You know, we kind of got someone for like each position where we needed someone, I guess. I guess you could say. But let's get into year two and we will see what the team is looking like. But here's a look at the team heading into year two and we're definitely better. And I'm really excited to see how this team can do. The reason I picked the Panthers is because they're usually good in simulation. They haven't been as much lately because their roster is so bad, but well, it's not the worst, but I've definitely had to lower it throughout the year, especially their offense. But I haven't really used the Panthers much in this game. So I'm hoping that we can perform at least decently well. We'll see, but we'll see what Drake May can do as a rookie. Troy Franklin, hopefully that becomes a good combo. We'll see. And then on defense, our defense is even better. Our defense is like legit pretty good. Our edge group is, eh, other than Josh Uche, I don't know how well it's going to play, but on paper, it isn't bad. Our D-line isn't great, but at least we have Dorless. Hopefully he can do well as a rookie. I don't know. I'm really interested to see how we can do. We might suck because sometimes year two in rebuilds does suck, but we'll just have to see what happens. So let's get to the midseason point and we will see if we have a good record or if we are just completely terrible. You never know. Okay, well, despite getting much better in terms of overall, we still have the same record, which is very EA. We have one of the worst offenses in the league. Our defense is actually decent, which is not what I expected. I thought that would be the other way around. What's the problem this year with the offense? Only four passing touchdowns so far. Damian Harris isn't doing great. How do you only have 289 yards in six games? That's crazy. Oh, our tackle duo's on pace for about 20 sacks each. So that's cool. That's realistic. That's cool. And we do not have much pressure on D. I mean, I've seen a lot worse, so I won't complain too much. I've seen a lot worse. I've seen zero at the midseason with like really good pass rushers. So that's interesting. Who do we have to re-sign? Anyone important? Not really. Okay, yeah, literally nobody I'm super interested in. So quick midseason. That's all I really have to show here. Hopefully we can bounce back, especially on offense. Good Lord. But let's see what kind of record we end up with. Hope I'm I kind of hope we don't bounce back so we can get the bad season out of the way. There always has to be one. Hopefully this is the one and we get it out of the way. We'll see. Okay, well, we at least get one win better. That's better than being worse, I guess. Is it though? Maybe maybe it would have been better if we went 0-17 so we could guarantee the number one pick. Well, let me see what we get. I would guess number two. Oh, okay. No, we do have the number one pick. We'll take that. Okay, never mind. I'm glad we had the record we did. I'm glad we could at least win a few games. But this next year is where we could start getting getting decent. Drake May wasn't even that bad considering, you know, his roster. 3,400 yards, 15 touchdowns, eight picks. Not a great completion percentage. Obviously, we're hoping for much better than this, but 
for the the offensive line he had to work with, this isn't bad. Damian Harris actually ended up being good. For, or 1,100 yards, 4.2 per carry, only seven touchdowns, but oh well. Troy Franklin led the team with 859 yards, only four touchdowns though. I don't think that's going to be enough for rookie of the year. Probably not even close, but he was decent. LaVisca Chanel and Rashid Shahid, all of our receivers had 800 yards. The blocking got better in the second half of the year. Uh, Kennard was still terrible. Matt, how do you say that last name? I've never heard it pronounced. Gone, gone, gone Cav, gone Calvis, gone Cavs. I have no idea. Gone Caves. That's an interesting name. Trey Hill kind of sucked at center, but John Simpson and Natani Moody were good. Patrick Queen led the team with 110 tackles, 100 for Jeremy Banks, TFLs, 13 for Dorless as a rookie. He was decent. And sacks, seven and a half for Uche led the team, four and a half for Dorless, four for Pierce and Harrison. Not the best sack numbers, but I've seen a lot worse, so we'll take it. And then interceptions, two for Okuda and Fulton, and then one for Alo. He Gilman. Interesting. But MVP goes to Dak Prescott again? That's interesting. Or was it Dak last year? I feel like I got memory wiped or something. I I don't know. Caleb Williams as a rookie up there at number five, though, of course. Oh, God. The, the Raiders are going to go 17-0 and here. They're dominant in this game with a bad roster. Them with Caleb Williams is going to be terrifying. But Offensive Player of the Year goes to Dak. Defensive Player of the Year goes to another Cowboy, Micah Parsons, of course. Oh, and Drake May does win Offensive of rookie of the year that's really surprising he wasn't that good stats wise uh troy franklin at number four i'll have to check what bo Nix did because yeah drake may wasn't great we'll see leatu latu wins defensive rookie of the year brandon dorless all the way down at eight i thought he would be way higher than that but i mean either way not a great season hopefully we can do better next year i'm expecting to but will that actually happen is it already popped this message up i know but will we actually get better is a different question bo Nix was low-key better than Drake May. I mean, he threw a lot of touch or a lot of interceptions, but I don't know. It was close. Anyways, let's get into the offseason and we will see what we can do. Hopefully we get more dev ups this year. We'll see. But here in the Super Bowl, the Ravens beat the Eagles 35 to 32. <laughs> the Ra Is this going to be the Super Bowl we see every year now? Ravens and Eagles. I mean, at least it's two good teams in real life, but are the Eagles that good anymore? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but let's see who we have to re-sign. Did anyone here get dev traits? I do not think think so, so I don't think we're going to bring anyone here back at all. <laughs> Riley Patterson, I guess, so I don't have to worry about kicker if he wants to. Okay, he does sign. Cool. But underwhelming re-signing period over. Did we hit any dev ups? Well, Drake May has superstar dev. You know, he's a really high upside guy, so I thought that was fair. And on defense, I don't think we hit any dev ups, unfortunately. So none this year. I guess that makes sense. There wasn't really anyone who did super great necessarily. But let's get into free agency and we will see what we can do. Oh, Okay, Aaron Donald is here. There are some good guards. Zach Martin, Joel Batonio, and Wyatt Teller. This is a pretty decent free agent class. I mean, it's old, but good. Like your mother. Sorry. All right, well, I think this is what we're gonna do in free agency. Is this what I should do? See, I want to tackle. Should I just go for one of these guys? Here's the thing. I want a right tackle because our right tackle was much worse than our left tackle, but... <sighs> Rob Havenstein is kind of terrible in this game. Well, he's actually been pretty good for the Rams, but I feel like if we sign him, he's just gonna, you know, be awful, because he usually is. I could just move the guy we had at left tackle to right. Oh, Taylor Decker was awful last year. Okay. Same with Deion Dawkins. Cool. All right, maybe I won't sign a tackle. Maybe we're fine with what we got. We can just draft a right tackle. That works. But anyways, we are gonna go for Aaron Donald, Wyatt Teller, Nico Collins, Razul Douglas, and Khalil Mack. A group of mostly older players, but good players. And I don't know if we're gonna get all of these guys. I would guess no. <laughs> really, only one player is interested in the team, and that's why at Teller, the rest have zero interest. But we have a good offer in for all of them. We have the lead for all of them, the leading offer, but will any of these players sign that deal? I don't know. That's that's the question. Let me just double check. Is there any, like, is there any backup plan I could make? I don't know. If we don't get Nico Collins, we could go for Jerry Judy. He's in Interested. He's not great, but he's interested. All right, let's go. Let's let's see if these players want to sign. I feel like I'm speaking weird. I feel like I sound nasally. I feel like I breathed in a shit ton of dust. I dusted something off. Either way, most of the players do sign, and we get literally all of them. Aaron Donald, Wyatt Teller, Razul Douglas, and Khalil Mack join the makeshift expansion team. We'll call it that. The Cardinals got Joel Batonio. The Broncos got Jamal Adams. They just love the Seahawks' sloppy seconds, don't they? Like, why would they do that? I don't know. But this team should be a lot better now, I would
would hope. We still have a lead for Nico Collins. Does he want to sign now? Oh my god. Okay, well, hopefully Jerry Judy's available still. He is. Okay. Not nearly as good, but still pretty good. Let's go team friendly, I guess. Just so he's a little cheaper. It still should be green interest. Yeah. So does he want to sign? Okay, he does. Cool. Nico Collins goes to the Jets. That's fine. But now we are looking much better. And we still have the draft coming up. So we will see what we can do there. But in the draft, we pick at number one. And honestly, I think we might trade out of this pick because there isn't really much here that helps us. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> David Floyd looks so insane that I just might have to take him. I don't know. I have no experience drafting players that look like this. I don't think I've ever taken an edge at number one. Ever. He looks kind of crazy though. Same with Jason Bolden. He almost looks better. Well, I don't know. His, his block shed isn't very good and he's not as fast. Do I trade this back or do I do the fun thing and stay in pick? Because if I stay in pick, if I stay in pick, David Floyd is going to be a 73 overall with normal dev. If I trade down, he's going to be an 84 with X factor. That's just how my, <laughs> that's just how it feels sometimes. I don't know. I'm not very good at draft, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes I am. Fuck it. Should we take David Floyd? I don't know. I'm kind of scared. Fuck it. David Floyd, welcome to the team. Hidden dev, thankfully. Good lord. 88 speed, 85 strength, 87 excel. We're in number 39. That's kind of ugly, but he looks pretty good. I don't know where we're going to play him because we just signed Khalil Mack, but we'll find it out. And now let's see. I wanted a receiver. Ooh, the guy I wanted is still here. Arthur Freeman. So most of the receivers in this class look terrible. Arthur Freeman actually looks pretty good. From what I can tell, I he doesn't have the best medium route though. I mean, I can't really expect that necessarily. Nick Sutton looks decent too. He is legitimately terrible medium route running though. Also, I I hate this. Nick Sutton ran a 4.47 at the combine and a 4.42 at his pro day and has great speed and elite acceleration. I've seen receivers that ran like a 4.32 and have like good speed and solid acceleration. Why is that a thing? I know there can be variants and I know like 40 time isn't everything for speed, but it shouldn't be that. <laughs> like a receiver that ran a 4.47 at the combine shouldn't be considerably faster than a receiver that ran like a 4-3-2. That's just fucking stupid. It is. Anyways. <laughs> oh, wait, he's a deep threat? Oh, wait, I just saw him and I assumed he was a physical. Okay, no, we're going with the physical type. Deep threats usually suck in this game. Arthur Freeman doesn't look the best, but he looks decent, so let's take him. Hidden Dev, 91 speed, 94 excel. I don't think I've ever taken a physical receiver that doesn't have Hidden Dev. They're kind of broken. <laughs> Ooh, Jose Seawright has a man. That's kind of nice. Oh, he is slow. Okay, never mind. Ooh. I've never seen that glitch in the draft before. There's one player in the game who still has like a gray box around their face. Who was the receiver like a few years ago that was pretty good for the the Lions and then just kind of disappeared like a big body guy. Oh God, I'm never going to find him doing this. <laughs> was it was it even the Lions? I don't know. He must not be on a team right now in the game. I don't know. I don't think he's on a team in real life either, but I think he's still a free agent. Either way, it's a weird glitch. One of the 14 million glitches that exist in this game. Is he a decent player? though. I <laughs> I need to change his face if I take him because that'll drive me insane. But he does look, uh, he's not a very good pass blocker, but he has really good strength, elite strength. We might have to take him. We'll see. Oh, Matthew Harris looks better though. Never mind. I think we'll go with Matthew Harris if we do go with the tackle. I think that's what we're going to do actually. Elite strength, better blocking stats than Trent Allen. Sounds good. Shit. <laughs> Normal dev. All right. It's usually better to go with guards, at least I think. Usually they're better, but I wanted to switch it up. Screw me for trying to be different, I guess. But I'll make a couple more picks and we will see what kind of draft we had. I feel like it was pretty good, but you never know. We'll see. Okay, David Floyd is a very good player. He's an 80 overall with Hidden Dev, of course, as y'all saw, but yeah, he is definitely good. Was it in the last rebuild we saw the Jets get like an 84 overall edge rusher with the number one pick? That was insane. Oh, of course. <laughs> Jason Bolden was actually better. Now, I don't know if he would have been if we moved him down outside linebacker? Uh, well, he would have been one overall better. I don't even want to check his dev trait because I know what it's going to be and I know what our guys is going to be, but either way, we got a good player. Ooh, this quarterback is crazy to the Seahawks. To Sean Landry, this dude looked terrible. I'm surprised he's good. Oh, he has 97 spec catch. Okay, yeah, that'll do it. That's why I wish there were A pluses. This was a really strong, uh, strong draft class. Greg Davis to the Titans, he looks like a very good safe. Lots of 82 overalls. There was an 82 overall 
overall guard. An 81 overall safety. Yeah, this was a good one. But our other picks were pretty good. Arthur Freeman is a 75. He's even a higher overall than I thought he would be. I thought he would only be like a 72, but he looks nice. Matthew Harris is like surprisingly bad. Yeah, he's just straight up not good at all, which is weird. Yeah, don't don't draft tackle. Just go interior. Is he a better? Eh, well, he's a 72 at guard, but we need a tackle more, so not a great pick there. Trey Levine is okay, 73 overall. Does have hidden dev, thankfully. He'll probably start for us at center. And then the rest of the draft was was something. <laughs> it was definitely something. But let's get into year three, and we will see how the team is looking. But here's how we're looking, and we have a pretty good team now. We're up to an 81 overall. Our offense is definitely worse than our defense. I almost said that wrong. I almost said... Our offense is definitely better. I'm tired as hell. Just our O-line overall definitely holds our offense back, and we don't have, like, any great receiving options for Drake May. I mean, we have potentially good ones, but they're not at their potential yet. We also still need a tight end, which I was gonna draft, but we just had so much other stuff to draft that I didn't. And maybe Floyd was unnecessary, but I want to get him as much playing time as we can so he can develop a little bit. Could have a really good dev trait. I mean, he's already gone up almost two overall throughout the preseason. We'll see. But yeah, the team's looking decent. Still not amazing, but much better than last year and much, much better than the year before. So we'll see how it performs. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if it's not great once again, but if it isn't, I, I think I know what the problem is going to be. <laughs> so let's get to the midseason point of year three and we will see how we're doing. Hopefully better than the last two years. Okay, we are definitely better this year. We are three and four at the midseason point, matching our total wins from last year already. So much better. We destroyed the Saints for 42 to 17 in week seven. So things are looking up. Let's see if there are any problems. Maybe we can make a benching if someone's, you know, playing terribly. Ooh, okay, no, our blocking is very good. Natani Moody and Matthew Harris both are on pace to join the all-castration team. And Aaron Donald already has 10 and a half sacks. How are we only three and four? Oh, we only have three total interceptions. Okay, that'll do it. Yeah, that'll, that'll definitely do it. Has Alohi Gilman done like anything so far? Yeah, he was decent last year. Interesting. Okay, our passing game on offense isn't very good, but I think that's just because we're running the ball so much. We're number five for rush yards per game, so yeah, that's probably it, I hope. And yeah, we only have three takeaways on defense, and we've allowed a decent amount of touchdowns, so I think we'll get better throughout the second half of the year. Our offense might get a tiny bit worse, but our defense should finish somewhere around, like, top 15, I would say. And we have a breakout linebacker. Who's this gonna be? Oh, Josh Uche? Is he getting a lot of playing time <laughs> like I'm surprised it's him of all players I kind of like half benched him but hold the Vikings to less than 200 yards or get Josh Uche two plus picks force fumbles tackles for loss or sacks so I guess we'll see if we can hit that in a second but we have some re-signings to make is there anyone important here oh Michael Pierce how's he done I haven't really noticed him much decent amount of tackles for loss he's been all right I don't know if I want to resign him though resign him though because we do have Aaron Donald now we can maybe just draft his replacement and pay someone else no guarantees there though natani moody i do want back he's been really good he resigns and then i think that's about it for now at least but let's see if we can hit the breakout usually we lose the game when we're seeing if we can hit a breakout no matter how bad the other team is yeah we lose to a one in six team or something so that's cool and we do not hit the breakout of course i know this game too well okay never mind we just get overall worse in the second half of the year that's cool <laughs> our defense got worse and our our offense got worse, so nothing improved at all. What went wrong? Like, everything seemed to be good at the midseason. Drake May was better than last year. We just don't pass much. Only 427 attempts, 21 touchdowns. The picks are a little high for not passing that much, but it could be a lot worse, so it is what it is. Damian Harris was a little worse than last year, but still decent overall. Jerry Judy led the team with 850 yards, but, like, that's about it. Ooh, okay, our blocking fell off a cliff in the second half of the year, but Natani Moody joins the all-castration team, which if you don't know is my imaginary list of players that do not allow a sack in a season. So now Natani Moody joins it. I'm sure he was already on the list because he's really good in this game usually, but he rejoins it now. We're definitely going to look for a new left tackle though. And then on defense, Patrick Queen led the team with 105 tackles, tackles for loss, 11 for Donald, 10 for Uche, and sacks. Despite having like a million pass rushers, a million edge rushers, really Aaron Donald is the only one who gets anything done. 19 and a half sacks for him, 7 for 
Khalil Mack, which is impressive. Well, I guess he played more snaps than I thought. He played 827, so seven is decent, I guess. That's not amazing, though. David Floyd wasn't great as a rookie, but wasn't terrible. Josh Uche was fucking terrible though. 946 snaps and only three sacks. That's not great. And in interceptions, we had five total on the season. Three for Douglas, two for Williams, or and then one for Williams and Okuda. What do we do? <laughs> Like, legitimately, what do we do? We had a technically good defense. Well, I wouldn't even say that, but it was better than our offense, but I almost feel like we need to change our defense more than we need to change our offensive playbook. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Do we try the Raiders? I feel like every time I try the Raiders, it's just awful. I don't know. I don't know if that's the move. It might be, but I I don't know. I don't know, maybe this was just another unlucky year. Am I coping? Maybe. We definitely should have been better than six and 11, but let's get into the off season and we will see what we can improve for this final season. We're definitely gonna go as crazy as we can in free agency. Okay, well, I forgot to check yearly awards. I don't think we would have won any anyways, but the Chiefs beat the 49ers in the Super Bowl. That's, that's a Super Bowl meet, rematch, right? Yeah, I think the Chiefs also won that one. But did we hit any dev ups this year? No, <laughs> none on offense. And how about defense? Ooh, okay, no dev ups, I don't think, no. But David Floyd does have X Factor. That's what I was hoping for. Well, I'm assuming he had it. Yeah, he did, so that's huge. We will take that. But as for the rest of the defense, I <laughs> I am really glad Aaron Donald is still here. I, I was sure he was gonna retire. And without him here, this defense would be horrific. Well, not actually. I mean, it's great on paper, but on paper and how it actually plays are two different things in this game, which can be a thing in real life. It just shouldn't be a thing in this game. It shouldn't. There's no control over it. Anyways, <laughs> I complain enough about the game, whatever. More than enough. But is there anyone we want to re-sign here? I don't think so. Michael Pierce, I'm good. Yeah, we're good on everybody. It's mostly just backups or like replaceable starters. So let's see who's going to be available in free agency. Hopefully somebody good that we can get, at least. I'm feeling defeated, bruh. Like, I feel like, I know it hasn't, but I just feel like simulation's gotten even worse. I know that isn't like possible unless they tweaked something and I just didn't know about it, but it feels like even more than ever, teams just underperform if they have a good roster. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Micah Parsons is here. Well, we don't have the money. Can we make, do we even need him? I mean, look, he's really good and all, but I know if I get him, he's gonna get six sacks, maybe 11 TFLs if I'm lucky. Like, I don't know. Maybe I just don't know how to use players in this game. Like, is there, I don't know. Other than him though, who do we want? Well, I think if we're getting Mike, eh. yeah, we probably shouldn't go for Micah Parsons, but who do we want if we don't get him? Ooh, okay. I don't know if we're gonna get Jordan Mailata. Of course, he's an 88 overall, but it looks like he plays like shit. Ronnie Stanley was good, but that's in a very run heavy off. I guess we are too. Hmm. All right, let me see if I can free up a little bit of money. All right, well, interesting free agent class here. We are gonna go for Ronnie Stanley, which would be cool. I hope he plays well. <laughs> that's the thing, but I mean, either way, it'll make the team look better. And really, that's all I can build. That's literally all I can do is build a good team on paper and hope it plays well. I mean, I always try to go, oh, I think this player will do well and prioritize like, you know, performance over overall. Maybe I should just stop that. Maybe I, there isn't really a point because the team won't do well either way. So maybe I should just go for higher overall all guys. I don't know. <laughs> but Ronnie Stanley will try to get him. Cortland Sutton too. Will be our number one receiver. I wish there was a better receiver this year. I wish we could have got Nico Collins last year, but Cortland Sutton and Tyler Lockett are the two highest overall guys, and Sutton's younger and actually interested, so we'll go for him. And then we're also gonna go for Grady Jarrett. We'll play him at defensive tackle, I guess. Yeah. We're gonna have kind of a small D line. Eh, who cares? It's not a realistic rebuild. Whatever. But let's see if these three players want to sign. Okay, so it looks like we get Cortland Portland Sutton, but mm. you know what? I might as well go player friendly for <laughs> Ronnie Stanley just because like we don't have anything else to spend the money on and I want to guarantee that we can get, you know, at least a left tackle. But now do these two want to sign? Okay, we get Grady Jarrett, Ronnie Stanley. Okay, we get all three of them. Cool. So those should be pretty big upgrades. Will it matter? Who knows? But let's get to the draft. But here in the draft, we pick at number seven. The Saints have the number one pick this year and we have one need <laughs> and there just so happens 
tends to be no first round talents at that position. I guess this isn't our one need necessarily. Ooh, but it is definitely need. This guy's interesting. Early round blocking tight ends are kind of rare, kind of weird. I don't know if he's good or not. I feel like we could get a player as good as him later, like Jeremiah Snelling, which is an interesting name. He looks about as good, maybe, maybe not as good. I don't know, it's hard to say. Anyways, we're gonna have to figure that out later on. <laughs> For sure. I don't even know what we need other than tight end though. Is Kelvin Pryor good? I mean, he's a first round talent. I don't know that we need another lineman necessarily, but we could. I mean, our old line overall isn't great, but it plays pretty well. At least it did last year. <laughs> maybe we could go for a linebacker. I don't know about picking linebacker top 10, but maybe we could also go D-line, safety, corner. Oh, I wonder if there's a really good corner. Oh, there's a safety, Nathan Hubbard. He looks really good. Elite speed, jumping, and acceleration. A awareness, A zone. The man coverage isn't great, but he's also not a very good tackler. Hmm. Again, I don't know about safety top 10, but he looks good. I don't know. I'm not very good at picking safeties for the most part, though. I think we're gonna go with Jaron Jeffries. He has great speed, great acceleration, great strength. A man, A press, B zone. I hope his awareness and play rec are a B and a C, but I don't know. Other than that, though, he does look really good. He's probably gonna have normal dev. Am I fine with that? I mean, I don't know what else we would do if we don't take him. <laughs> All right, yeah. Let's go with Jaron Jeffries out of Alabama. Normal dev. You hate to see it, but 94 speed, 92 excel, 94 change of direction. He looks good, even though he just has normal. And now we can go with a tight end. Do I want to take a chance on that blocking guy? I mean, he did look kind of good. Ooh, there's also Dom Quincy who looks kind of crazy. Not very strong, but I mean, not the worst strength. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go Dom Quincy. Also out of Alabama. So we're going back to back Alabama players. He looks good. Doesn't have the best spec catch, but literally everything else looks good. So let's take him. Of course he has normal. Fine, whatever. <laughs> sure. Maybe I could get like a receiver and move him to tight end. Oscar Morris looks insane. We don't need another receiver though. Is there a good linebacker? Mm, I can't tell if Kirk Kendricks is good. Almost looks good. I can almost confidently say he looks good. As long as he actually does have A zone and A pursuit. If he doesn't, I don't think he's good. He might be the best option though either way, because the rest of the linebacker look terrible. I'm not gonna reach for a player just because he's a need. Let's go with the receiver and move him to tight end fun. I'm gonna cheese it a little bit because the game always cheeses me, so fuck it. Oscar Morris, he lacks discipline. What's his injury? CDF injury, plus he's a physical. All signs point to hidden dev, so let's see that normal dev. Okay, no, he does have hidden, thankfully. <laughs> but I might make one or two more picks and I will see y'all for the draft recap. Okay, well, this was an interesting draft. Jaron Jeffries is only a 78. I wish he was better, but it is what it is. He's still pretty Pretty good. He'll still start. Dom Quincy actually isn't that good. I thought he would be like a 76. He's only a 73. His route running just isn't that good, and his spec catch and catch and traffic aren't anything special. So looking at his ratings, I'm surprised he's even a 73. Like these rate, I guess his route running isn't bad for a tight end. I don't know. <laughs> That's interesting. Oscar Morris was a 76 at receiver. He might even be better to just keep at receiver, honestly. Well, we'll see. And then I took these two picks. Barclay isn't very good, but Alex Murray. 72 with hidden dev. He's a blocking tight end. Y'all know I like to take them a lot. It's maybe a little cheesy, but they shouldn't put <laughs> blocking tight ends available in the seventh round with like X Factor. That's not my fault. I mean, I don't know if he'll have X Factor. Now that I say that, he'll probably only have star, but we'll see. So not the best draft, but it was decent. And let's get into year number four. But here's a look at the team heading into what is probably the final year of the rebuild. And we're looking very good. I mean, we're an 83 overall, which isn't the best team I've ever rebuilt, but it's a lot better than <laughs> the zero players we started with. So I don't know why I closed out of the roster, but yeah, we have a pretty good offense and then a really nice defense, 85 overall. Should I go crazy and trade for a player? Would that be, I feel like we're just missing something on this team. I don't, I guess I can't necessarily say that because we have Aaron Donald, who's, you know, insane. But other than him, we don't have like any dominant, dominant players. I mean, we have a lot of good players in real life, but most good players in real life play like shit in this game, so I don't know. We'll just ride it out. If we suck at the midseason, we'll probably trade for a player. It just really depends. But speaking of that, let's get to the midseason and we will see how this team does in probably the final year. All right, well, this is an interesting situation to be in. We're four and two at the midseason. We're, we're good. We're not that good though. We actually have the best defense in the league. Our offense is pretty bad though. Okay, fuck it. We're gonna switch the offensive playbook. We'll try something different. It could not work out. It could 
make us a million times better? I don't know. Let's try the Raiders offense. We'll do it. <laughs> it's always good. Will it be good when we use it? Probably not, but it usually is. So hopefully that works out well, and we definitely won't touch our defense. So I don't think we're going to trade for anyone. We're just going to hope that we can succeed in the second half of the year. Let's check out. Ooh. Okay, yeah, that might be a good choice. Drake May only has eight touchdowns and nine interceptions. He's doing terribly. <laughs> Damian Harris is doing okay. Yeah, we, we definitely need a new offense. Matthew Harris, he's our worst blocker so far. He isn't doing bad, but I think I know what's going to happen in the second half of the year. I don't know. It, I have no real reason to replace him yet, so I'm not going to, but I think I know what's going to happen. Anyways, let's just get to the end of the year, and we will see what kind of record we finish with. I hope we're in the playoffs. No promises. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe that was the key, the key to success, because if you've seen one of these videos before, y'all know why we're here. Uh, before I reveal how we did in year four, if you haven't already, be sure to drop a like on the video. I know it sounds stupid, but it really helps out the channel, helps the video do better, helps push it to more people. And 1,500 likes for, I don't remember what I said, dude. Oh yeah, relocate, an actual like relocation expansion team. I'll do that if we hit 1,500 likes. I've been asked to do that. I don't even know how many times. And of course, subscribe if you want to be an OG because we are less than like 200 away from 30K at this point. And of course, let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below. Maybe, I don't know, something chaotic, some kind of fantasy draft, any realistic rebuild. Just let me know if there's something you want to see. But anyways, in year number four, we finished... 13 and 4 and we made the playoffs our defense technically fell off a tiny bit but was still really good our offense finished as the number nine scoring offense in the league so maybe the raiders playbook is the move i don't know it must be oh god we actually lost two of the next three after the midseason but then we won literally every other game so i'm happy about that i don't know if this team deserves to go 13 and 4 but it's better than this team going like 4 and 13 which was a positive possibility. Let's see, we have an 86. That isn't going to be like the best in the league, obviously, but it's pretty good. I mean, really good considering what we had to do to get this team, but it's pretty good overall. It deserves to be a playoff team for sure. I don't know about first round by, but a playoff team. But let's check out season stats. Drake May honestly hasn't been that good throughout the rebuild. He's been all right, but he hasn't been very good. Never broke more than 22 touchdowns in a season and had 14 interceptions this year. That's not that's not great. I think he did. Yeah, he had a good completion percentage, which is nice, but that's really the only good stat he had. Damian Harris had 1,400 yards, though, 4.6 per carry, 11 touchdowns, 15 touchdowns for Kendrick Weatherspoon as the number two running back. Cortland Sutton, almost 1,000 yards. Same with Troy Franklin. Not much for receiving outside of those two, though. The blocking actually held up pretty well in the second half of the year. Nobody did bad, really, at all. And then on defense, Patrick Queen led the team with 104 tackles. TFL 16 for Aaron Donald. 14 for Cleo Mack, 11 for Grady Jarrett, 10 for David Floyd, and Sacks, 11 for Aaron Donald led the team, and then a little bit of a fall off after that, 7 for Floyd, 6 for Mack, 4 for Dorless. Still just not much pressure despite having Aaron Donald, <laughs> a number one pick who has X Factor and is like a, an 87 overall, Khalil Mack, Josh Uche, Grady Jarrett, you know, just a decent D-line. But interceptions, 3 for Patrick Queen, and Jaron Jeffries is a rookie, it looks like he did pretty well, 2 for Verona. McKinley and then one for a few players. But let's check out yearly awards. I remembered this year. Okay, cool. 50 millionth DAC MVP. Caleb Williams at number two. So maybe I wish we could have gotten him. <laughs> Offensive player of the year goes to Dak Prescott. No Panthers. Defensive player of the year goes to Micah Parsons now on the Seahawks, winning it for third year at least at this point. I don't know. I think it's about three, maybe two. Aaron Donald at number five. I almost missed him. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Henry Beckett for the Packers. Oscar Morris at number seven. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Davion Lowry for the Viking. Jeffries at three and no other Panthers, but pretty good year. It, our stats don't look as good as our record. Our record's like insane, but like what was what was that good on the team? I mean, our run game was really good. Other than that though, I mean, we must have just had a really good pass D. I don't know. Did we? Oh yeah, and a really good run D, the second best run D in the league. But anyways, let's see who we're going to be taking on in the divisional. Ooh, it's going to be the nine and eight Philadelphia Eagles. Now we have the same overall so this I don't know I guess it could go either way but we have a first of many scenario I don't know how much confidence I have for this game but hopefully we can win but I will go play it cool y'all know me unless you're new then you don't but I literally always pick that oh and we have a couple upgrades Patrick Queen being the important one here but that's all for us to do so let's simulate this game out also AJ Brown
Brown only had 662 receiving yards and four touchdowns. I love this game. Let's simulate it out and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> okay, we do win 28 to 21. So now we're gonna be taking on the Chicago Bears who have an 87 overall team, but only went nine and eight. <laughs> that sounds about right. What is their team looking like? Did they sign one of our former players or something? I mean, they have DJ Moore. It looks like they signed Deron Bland. That's interesting. Oh yeah, they got the really high overall guard, Kieris Falk. Interesting. And they did get Derek Brown. Okay, they got one of our players. They also have Tyler Algier and Malik Neighbors. This team's kind of crazy. This team's good. They also have Braxton Jones as a backup, and they have a 75 overall star dev third string left tackle. <laughs> what an interesting team. Couldn't imagine where they got all that draft capital. Or no, well, we took it back. Never mind. Anyways, we have a recap for the first of many. Give us those sweet, juicy staff points. Please and thank you. But let's simulate this game out against the Bears and let's probably lose. I wouldn't even be mad if we did because they have the better overall, but we'll see. Just kidding. We win 20 to 17 and we are going to be taking on the Raiders in the Super Bowl. I think I'm willing to comfortably say I don't think Raiders Panthers is going to be the Super Bowl in the next few years, but I guess things can change quick. I don't know. We have an upgrade for Malik Harrison for some reason, but we have a Super Bowl media day scenario and a hot opponent scenario. I mean, is that really relevant in the Super Bowl? I mean, it's the Super Bowl. I don't know, but this is, well, no, this isn't just the beginning. I don't know why I picked that. This is everything. This is the last game of the rebuild, but the hot opponent scenario, I, again, I, <laughs> I guess you would be thinking about that in the Super Bowl. Like how good is this team been? But I, you're going up against the Raiders this week. That makes it sound like it's not the Super Bowl. <laughs> I don't know. We'll go be confident, but without further ado, let's jump in and we will see if we can the Raiders. Oh yeah. They have Caleb Williams. Oh God. Okay. But here we are in the Super Bowl and this is an interesting one. I feel like I can like see the future sometimes. I, <laughs> I don't know. I just had that weird feeling that we would be playing the Raiders in the Super Bowl. I don't know why I felt like that, but I could, I don't know. It's interesting. Either way, let's simulate this game out and we will see who wins. So the Raiders score first, but only a field goal. They're driving again, but they turn it over. They're driving again. They turn it over. They're driving again. Is anyone going to score? Is this just a defensive battle? We finally get a touchdown. They get one too, though, immediately after. We get another touchdown to make it 14-10, and they keep driving and not scoring. They finally score. Our offense is dead, but they score, and we match it in overtime. What an ending. We kick a field goal at the end to win the Super Bowl with the team where we had to cut every single original player. There's Zach Wilson. Why is he celebrating? I don't know. Why is that important? But <laughs> Caleb Williams and Drake May meet in the middle of the field. What an interesting Super Bowl. Nobody scored. It went to overtime. Both teams scored on their first drive in overtime, and then we had to kick a field goal to win it. That was something. Ooh, we get a recap for the hot opponent too. <laughs> but what a way to end a rebuild. That is the best ending we could ask for. So I really hope y'all enjoyed today's video. This was a fun one. This was a really interesting idea. I don't even know what made me think of this, but I'm glad I did it. So again, 1500 likes for a full-on expansion team rebuild. Thank you all so much for watching, and with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.